Are you planning a trip to the North Island of New Zealand? This video is for you. In this video, I'll be sharing a seven day North Island road trip itinerary. Before I break it down, opening sequence. Hello everyone, welcome back for another travel itinerary video. If this is the first video you've seen of mine, welcome. My name is Jeff Heyer and I create content about eco experiences. I create videos about exploring natural places, national parks, and wildlife hotspots all across the globe. Today we're covering New Zealand where I was based for 10 weeks. This was an incredible experience and I have a lot of content from this trip coming to the channel. Similar to this video, I've got a South Island itinerary video already posted. Make sure to check it out after watching this one if you plan on exploring both islands. Do you wanna to go to New Zealand, Queenie? <laughs> That's my dog. In this video, I'll be sharing a seven day itinerary I recently experienced on the North Island. This itinerary involves hiking, volcanoes, unique natural phenomena, adventure activities, surfing, beach time, good food, and so much more. This video is meant to give you some ideas for planning your own trip to New Zealand. I want to share areas we enjoyed, places we ate, and overall trip highlights. By watching this video, you'll gain a better sense of what you can explore in this amount of time and which experiences you might want to include on your trip. For context, my friend Melissa and I hit the road during our last week in New Zealand. We were living in Wellington, New Zealand's capital city, so this was a round trip itinerary that started and ended there. Now keep in mind that you can do this trip in the reverse order, you can make it a one way from Wellington to Auckland, Auckland to Wellington. There's no rules for which order you should do this. This itinerary is easily adaptable to your situation to best fit your preferred route. All the locations mentioned in this video are reachable in a day, no matter where you're starting from on the North Island. It's time to break it down. Are you ready? Let's jump into it. Starting with day one. Day one was all about exploring Wellington. Because we were living in Wellington for 10 weeks, I thought I'd kick off this itinerary by sharing some places we enjoyed visiting in this city. It's worth exploring for a day, possibly more if you have time. Wellington is New Zealand's windy capital city. It's surrounded by gorgeous coastline and seaside views. Here are some ideas for places to explore here. Firstly, the Eastern and Southern walkways. These are both gorgeous hiking trails that boast incredible views of this area. Now for reference, there's the Northern, Southern, Eastern, and Western walkways. You could do them all if you have time, but if you can only pick a few, we definitely suggest these ones. They both stretch along the coastlines, traversing through various neighborhoods, parks, and beaches. They offer panoramic views of the harbor, coastal cliffs, and native bush. These trails are great for getting a sense of the area. We really enjoyed walking these trails that overlook the city. The second spot that I absolutely love spending time in in Wellington was Zealandia. Zealandia is a fully fenced eco sanctuary nestled in the city. This is a fully protected environment for New Zealand's native species. The concept is that this specially designed fence line, which is 8.6 kilometers long, will keep invasive predator species not native to New Zealand from entering this ecosystem. If you didn't already know this, humans about 800 to 600 years ago introduced a list of invasive predator species to this country. This has negatively affected the ecosystem and that's why places like Zealandia exist. The concept behind Zealandia is that this is a predator-free zone where you can explore this country's nature in its purest form. It's here there are wonderful nature trails, bird watching opportunities, and museums to explore. They run walking tours here, which are definitely worth it in my opinion. We went on a two hour walking tour that provided a lot of context about wild New Zealand that we wouldn't have known otherwise. There are free shuttles that take guests to and from Zealandia that go from the city center and the cable car. This was one of my most favorite places to be and I went so frequently that I actually became a member. The third place you should consider visiting in Wellington is the Te Papa Museum. This is New Zealand's national museum. It houses an extensive collection showcasing the country's diverse culture, nature, and historical heritage. It's a beautiful building right in the central harbor and it's completely free of charge to visit. If you wanna dive deeper into this museum experience, there are some guided tours that you can book in advance. The last item on this list is food. Wellington is known for being a foodie city in New Zealand. There are several amazing cafes and restaurants to try. I have listed here some of my favorite spots that I went to more than once. That's a quick rundown on Wellington. There's lots to do here to fill up a day. Now let's jump into the road trip part of the itinerary. On day two, we picked up our rental car from the city center and headed north along the west coast. 
After driving for a couple of hours, we arrive at Egmont National Park. The centerpiece of this national park is Mount Taranaki, which is an active stratovolcano. Everything within a 9.6 kilometer radius of this mountain is protected by the national park, which is why from above there's a near perfect circle around it. We started our exploration at the Mount Egmont viewing platform and walked a short distance to the Wilkie's pools. This walk didn't even take an hour and was not strenuous at all. And look at this beautiful rainbow we saw on the way up. Such a great welcome to this beautiful wilderness. We then arrived at the Wilkie's pools, which are a bit dry in the late summer. There are some nice water features to enjoy and you can swim in them if you can brave the cold water temps. After this pleasant walk, we checked into our off-grid Airbnb, only a 10 minute drive from the park. This was a solar powered stay inside a guest barn. Really enjoyed this relaxing spa. It felt like we were on an eco retreat. The hosts of this Airbnb were super kind and greeted us warmly when we arrived. I have details for this Airbnb below if you're interested. Time for day three. On day three, it was time for our big hike, climbing Phantom's Peak. Cheers, it's gonna be a fun day. We first woke up and drove to the neighboring town of Stratford for some breakfast, then drove into the Egmont Circle and parked at Dawson Falls Visitor Center to get ready for our hike. Ready. The Phantom's Peak Trail starts in some thick forest, then opens up into some sub-alpine terrain. Eventually you hit stairs and then a scree field. Beware that this part is a bit steep and quite slick. Poles are recommended. We chose this hike because we wanted to get an up close view of Mount Taranaki, which is exactly what we got. At the peak, you can see the Syme Hut, which overlooks the volcano. This is a first come first serve hut that you can overnight in if there's available space. This hike there and back took five hours and 26 minutes to complete. We did it quite a bit faster than the trail head sign mentions, so for most people it might take a bit longer. This is a 5.2 mile out and back trail. The elevation was 3,461 feet, and the views were 10 out of 10 the whole way up. Well, except when the clouds came in, but when they burned off, the views were amazing. Once finished with this hike, we decided to do a quick add-on by walking to Dawson Falls because we were already so close. So the trails leading to Phantom's Peak and Dawson Falls both start pretty much in the same area. We took a short walk from the parking lot and arrived at Dawson Falls. This trail only took five minutes and it was a gorgeous oasis to check out. Waterfall. After our big hike, we drove to New Plymouth for some dinner and then went back to our Airbnb for a good night's sleep. Day four. Day four was all about caves. We went on a cave marathon. We woke up bright early to drive to the Three Sisters, which are rock pillars off the coast. This was a quick roadside stop. We managed to squeeze in a quick visit here before driving up to Waitomo. Waitomo is famous for its glowworm caves, a natural wonder of New Zealand. These bioluminescent creatures are small fungus gnats in the larval state. They emit a blue glow to attract prey like flies and other insects. They produce these long gooey strands to catch them, which you'll see hang down from the cave ceilings. Here in Waitomo, we experienced three of the five major activities they currently offer here. The first one was the Ruakuri Cave. I'm pronouncing that as best as I can. This was a wonderful 90 minute walking tour that travels down to these mesmerizing stalactite and stalagmite chambers. On this tour, you do see glowworms and you are allowed to photograph them. The second tour was quite simply called the Waitomo Glowworm Cave Tour, the shortest and most popular experience in Waitomo. This 45 minute tour involves a little bit of walking and a boat ride. You are not allowed to take photos and videos here, but they do take these professional green screen shots for a small additional charge. No, I did not actually propose to Melissa. This was the shortest tour, but we definitely saw the most glowworms in this cave. Next up on the agenda, we have black water rafting. This is going to be the main event of the day. Super excited about this. For the third tour, we decided to get even more immersed into the caves by getting in the river that runs through them. We went black water rafting. This experience was such a wild time. You put on these wetsuits, boots, and headlight helmets and embark on an underground journey. This is unlike anything I've ever experienced before. You jump over cascading waterfalls, you float down the river, and you have a ton of fun. Our guides were excellent and entertaining. Definitely recommend this tour for those seeking an adrenaline fuel type of experience. We went on the three hour black labyrinth option. There is a five hour black abyss option that includes zip lining and climbing as well. 
They call New Zealand an adventure capital for a reason. After our cave marathon, we emerged from Earth, readjusted our eyes to the light, and we checked into the Waitomo Homestead Cabins, a simple and sweet overnight option right near the Waitomo Caves. Before I finish talking about this day, I want to give a quick shout out to the Fat Kiwi Cafe where we had brunch. The food here was so delicious and I definitely recommend a stop when exploring Waitomo. We're on day five. On day five, we drove for one hour and 15 minutes to Raglan. Raglan is a renowned surfing destination on the coast. It's a vibrant place with great health food and the best laid back vibes. We spent most of this day hanging out the main surfing beach and it's there I actually took a surfing lesson. Not to toot my own horn, but I did manage to catch a few waves. Melissa did capture one of my successful surfs on camera. There are several different surf rental trucks right in the parking lot here where you can rent wetsuits, surfboards, and of course sign up for daily lessons. For accommodations, we booked this cute Airbnb, just a 15 minute walk outside of town called the Tui's Nest. It was small and perfect and just what we needed for this trip. On day six, we were in total relaxation mode. We drank smoothies, we went to the beach, we rented surfboards, caught some waves, soaked up the sun, a day of total relaxation and fun. At the end of the day, we drove to Titoto Gorge. It's a 20 minute drive on a narrow gravel road to this lookout point. There are some walking trails here as well. The views from this spot were absolutely stunning, a great way to end the day. On day seven, we made the long drive back to Wellington. This was a seven hour drive, but it was gorgeous the whole way. We didn't even mind the length. We took a different route down than we did on the way up, which made it new and exciting. For most of you watching this video, this is the point where you might not go back to Wellington. You might continue up to Auckland, you might travel to Rotorua, you might go elsewhere on the North Island. In our situation in particular, we had to drive all the way back south to Wellington. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was my seven day North Island itinerary. I hope you enjoyed learning about our road trip and listening to my review of these places and why they're worth visiting. I wouldn't have changed a thing about this trip. It was super fun, relaxing, scenic, and included everything I love about New Zealand. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. And if you wanna watch more videos like this one where I share travel insights, travel itineraries, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you being here and supporting my content. Enjoy your trip on the North Island of New Zealand. It's a wonderful place to be. Safe travels. Thank you.